this crypto market is young. And so it doesn't have, you know, a, a lot of institutional money that's been pouring into it for years. So we really haven't stabilized yet. Uh, we, it tends to be that prior to the Bitcoin having that we're going to see losses of, you know, 30 to even 50 percent. Uh, so the fact that we, you know, hit an all time high heading into that having makes this a different time than, than any other. You're listening to Carrie Lutz's Financial Survival Network, where you get valuable information you just can't find anywhere else. To thrive in today's trying times, you need the Financial Survival Network now more than ever. Go to FinancialSurvivalNetwork.com and get your free newsletter and gift. Financial Survival Network, now more than ever. And welcome. You are listening to and watching the Financial Survival Network. I'm your host, Gary Lutz. Hey, we're getting close to the last week in uh, April. What does it mean? Well, been watching Bitcoin. It's been sinking. I've been buying. It's been sinking. Uh, story of my life here. David Straczynski is with us. And David, uh, what of Bitcoin is it supposed to go up after the halving? And it hasn't. I'm a little disappointed here. Yeah, well, I, I, I hear you. And so uh, be patient. Uh, is the uh, uh, is the is the is the caution there? You know this this crypto market is young, and so it doesn't have you know a, a lot of institutional money that's been pouring into it for years. So we really haven't stabilized yet. Uh, we, it tends to be that prior to the Bitcoin having that we're going to see losses of you know thirty to even fifty percent. Uh, so the fact that we you know hit an all time high heading into that having makes this a different time than than any other. Uh, but to answer your question, hey, we we've now just done this having as of uh, Saturday. Or 20- and, uh, you know, and so we went from being able to produce 900 Bitcoins a day. Now it's going down to 450. Uh, demand is actually a lot higher than even the 900 on a daily basis. And so, uh, you know, the, 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 the question ultimately is where is price going to go? Well, supply and demand uh, is, uh, is is the easiest factor to, to be looking at right now because Bitcoin doesn't have like um, a use. You know, we're not even really trading it as much right now. People are buying, they're holding just like you and I. And Kerry, we recognize that uh, correction are actually opportunities to get more allocated. And in fact, there's a lot of people that are like, hey, it hit record highs. Is it too late to get in? And I say, no, it's not too late to get in. It'll go higher from here. But if you wait for some corrections and they will come, uh, then those tend to be you know, better buy-in points to allocate fresh powder uh, like cash. So uh, people that are bought dollar cost averaging uh, are doing really well. Um, and by the way, <laughs> you know, since uh, November 21, uh, we were in a crypto winter so uh, if, if you've been in this uh, any length of time, you know, there was nothing but losses yeah. that were happening there for quite a while. And it was looking bleak. I so know. Things are looking up today. Absolutely. I yeah. could not agree with you more. I mean, it's just uh, it's just people you tend to get impatient, right? You tend to like uh, want to uh, want it now because it's supposed to act a certain way. And then your emotions kick in here, David. And that's when you really get problems, isn't it? Yeah, that's right. You know, so if we if we remain, you know, emotional uh, as opposed to, you know, stick to the fundamentals. And, and by the way, you know, don't bet the farm on this, right? So uh, just because I have high conviction and you have high conviction that Bitcoin's going to go up, there's a lot of regulators out there today that do not like this idea of a decentralized currency. They want centralized. They want control for no other reason than to just have control. And so, you know, there might be that we find more resistance at the SEC. It might be that there's, you know, uh, uh, that we don't get the, the massive, massive rally that we're all expecting. You know, maybe it's delayed by a year because of geopolitical risks or challenges uh, with the SEC and court dates that have to come out, et cetera, et cetera. So, you know, I'm bullish about this long term. There's no way that you can, uh, you know, uh, magically just disappear the supply and demand, uh, you know, factors that that have gone into this. And the fact that there's only 21 million of them, you know, we do have 116 years left, though, of halvings. Uh, the, the last halving was supposed to take away a place like 2150 or 2140. So uh, I have a great idea. David, yeah. Why don't we make the the uh, Treasury and the Fed do a halving? So every year they can only they have to have the amount of debt they float, and they have to have the amount of currency units they produce. Uh, man, before you know it, the dollar would be worth more than Bitcoin, right? 
Yeah, except for the exact opposites happening right now. Yeah, and we find ourselves, you know, with a quote unquote good economy, Normal. although we're printing a hundred a trillion dollars every hundred days. I mean, come on. Right. Uh, yeah, and and the rule of seventy two. Uh, you know, which we, we think about as investors, you know, if you can get 5%, you know, ultimately it's going to take like 14% to, to, or 14 years to, to double your money. Well, think about it. If you have a credit card today and you're paying like 25%, we're talking three years and you've doubled. I, this is, this is the rule of 72 that no one's factoring in right now. So there's a lot of us debt fiat issues, uh, today that, uh, I think Bitcoin's, you know, bringing some, uh, information about and, and the world's paying attention. Yeah. Yeah. Well, what we have are doublings and triplings every year, right? Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Havings. Man, maybe Bitcoin is on to something here, you know? I love it, man. That's that's a that's a great that's a great uh great thought. Yeah, I um, mean, hey, like really, shouldn't this be? We uh we we write it into the law. I mean, what you know, this is the thing they've always said, no, you can't have the dollar go up. You've got to have a base amount of inflation to two percent a year which will cover the amount of uh you know increase in population and all this garbage you know they already did it nature already did it for precious metals a long time ago we we're seeing halvings there uh it's harder and harder and harder to to basically uh find new deposits and new large-scale mines in everything right mm -hmm. And, and, you know, and I think part of part of what you were noting there is um, how do we address inflation, given the fact that it is ticking up? The Federal Reserve was incorrect about that when they tried to spike the ball in it December. Sanatory. Who's yeah. sanatory? How could it be? Come on. Yeah. yeah. Six to seven rate cuts this year. No big deal. I'm like, yeah, right. How on earth do they think that's going to happen? You see, yeah, right. you and I both know Milton Friedman taught us this, that 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 inflation happens as a result of central banks printing money. There's not a single example in the world of inflation occurring outside of that specific phenomenon occurring. And, and we are printing will, at record levels. I will give you the direct quote because I heard this yes. quote 40 some odd years ago. When I first discovered uh, Milton Friedman, he had a uh, special on PBS, of all things, they never run it now, called Free to Choose. And the crux of it was that freedom, economic freedom, leads to massive prosperity, government interference leads to failure. And he said that inflation is first and foremost a monetary phenomenon, always it's always a monetary phenomena. And yet uh, our Federal Reserve here doesn't seem to uh, get it, do they? And Or they get it, but they're being uh, deceitful, right? Absolutely. And, and this is this is why I think that, you know, the, the conversation about Bitcoin and these other these other uh, like even gold and silver, right, at, at all time highs are just off by all time highs now uh, today. But uh uh, people are looking for alternatives, and you know where where do we go when it's out when Congress can't you know uh, when they continue to default on their budget because that's what they're doing they're defaulting on their budget by overspending continually. Uh, we can't just do this and and, and sustain as 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 people. Um, you know we're going to find ourselves printing and printing and printing and printing and printing, and you know for for all the naysayers today that are like oh man the economy's so strong. No question. We had an amazing Q1 uh, here to 2024. By the way, we had an amazing Q1 in 2023 as well. Both were based upon false expectations of when the Fed pivot's going to come. And so in the market, the market's now just starting to catch up on this idea that, you know, hey, maybe we're not going to be uh, uh, dropping rates as, as, as soon as we thought that we were. And, uh, you know, we, we were talking prior here. Uh, about uh, about some thoughts, et cetera. And, and, you know, I think it's right. You know, the next month uh, is probably we're going to see a, a melt up and uh, and we're going to be seeing prices go higher and higher. I mean, shoot, S&P could hit 6,000. By the way, it's a lot easier for it to hit 6,000 right now uh, than, than, you know, in the past because, you know, we, we've got all the animal spirits, as they like to call it. There's 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 a desire to want to see this bull market really happen. And uh, there's real money that'll jump into it. But but I believe that uh, that we're seeing unemployment come out right now uh, in a way that uh, if you don't see unemployment right now, it's because you're not actually paying attention to the real numbers. We're looking at these headline numbers and then the market rallies. 
And it's like the the market doesn't uh, look back and say, "Oh, wow, look, they've re- they've you know revised these numbers down thirteen you know months in a row." Uh, and and so maybe we need to you know pull back our our expectations on the market cycle. Oh, it doesn't care about about in hindsight twenty twenty. It just rallies on the headline. And so you know the headline numbers have been very deceptive. And so statistics lie. And you know we've been talking about this, Gary. But sure. uh, ultimately, I think that we're 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 heading to a time here where. Uh, you know, it's not going to be as smooth a sailing uh, as, as 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 we've seen. Uh, and my personal belief is that what is unexpected and coming is that we've got a massive debt crisis, uh, specifically in corporate America, but also in the consumer side. With you know, we in fact we had uh, the highest amount of defaults on consumer credit cards in the fourth quarter of 2023, uh, going all the way back to 2009 which was the height of, of credit card delinquencies uh, in the great financial crisis. So we're not in a recession, yet we find ourselves exceeding the great financial crisis's uh, credit card defaults. So uh, how, how do we say that this is just so rosy and peachy and wonderful and that we're not going to have challenges? I think it's time to hedge. I think it's time to, uh, to take a little bit of those risk off the table. And so, you know, places like Bitcoin, Places like uh, you know metals and metal miners, even very specifically, uh, present uh, opportunities. I think for the rest of the year and into the future, uh, that give us you know the ability to, to to really allocate to something that should be rallying up and not necessarily having as many challenges with interest rates and fiat currencies and the debt crisis uh, that uh, that's going on, and the banks don't really don't have the money to metabolize. I couldn't agree with you more, and. Uh... It looks like we're approaching a banking crisis. We never left the banking crisis. What I would say is that this banking crisis is going to become more and more apparent because yeah. if they don't cut interest rates, it it's a gimme. We're going to have it, right? Yeah, absolutely. And 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 so the Fed sort of at this you know rock in a hard place. Um, you know, so what ended up happening? Paul Volcker had to come in uh, in in the late seventies, and he had to ratchet these rates all the way up. Why? Because his predecessor cut rates too early and it caused inflation to just take off. I guarantee you right now uh, that if we cut rates in the way that, you know, that, that we were expecting to in December seven times this year, uh, that that would have caused the market to just rally and, and go to such highs right now. That's very inflationary. If they don't cut, just to your point, uh, we're going to see recession right now. Uh, 2023 had the lowest amount of housing sales, uh, even lower than 2009. That's amazing. Uh, it goes all the way back to 1995 uh, that we had a lower read than what was was sold uh, last year. And so the average consumer is not doing well. Housing is unaffordable. That's a part of the American dream, the middle class. Uh, there is not a real strength right now that, that like we had pre-2020. And so I'm trying to help people to understand something. And so I say you should have 2020 vision. Let's look at the world pre-2020 and now post-2020. Where are we today? And what has changed? I can measure a distance when I have two points in time. Look at this. Inflation's off the uh, going way high. We've got interest rates that are way up. Housing's never been more unaffordable. We've got credit cards at record highs. Delinquencies at record, high, record highs. And by the way, banks are about to be sucking wind even more, to your point, uh, because those credit cards are unsecured debt. Unlike a house, you can come and repossess or a car in the event that someone defaults. You're not taking someone's milk and eggs and gasoline back. Credit cards are unsecured debt. Same with those buy now, pay laters. And so as America's racking themselves up here and putting themselves in a very difficult mathematical situation to pay off, um, I think that we are we are literally setting ourselves up right now for a very fragile moment. And, uh, and I hope uh, that uh, especially those that are nearing or entering retirement recognize these challenges and can ultimately you know, do the things right now today to preserve, pull a little back, take something off the table. How do we allocate is really the question today. And uh, I think what got us here is not necessarily what's going to lead us forward. I could not agree with you more here. So, uh, so Bitcoin, gold, uh, what else we got here? Uh, big fan of U.S. oil. Now, obviously, with with any of these, we need to get some regulatory changes uh, in D.C. You know, so the White House, D.C., et cetera, the regulators, we need them to be on board with, you know, mining and 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 going for oil. So I'm bullish on U.S. oil. We do it cleaner and safer than anyone else in the world. Not cheaper, but cleaner and safer. We prioritize those things here in the Western world. And so uh, I think that that's important to understand. In fact, I think the U.S. has enough oil for all of us uh, and natural gas even for, for the NATO. Uh, we just need refineries. And so if we can get back to more 
supply side economics that are going to help to build us and bolster our nation. That's really our ticket, I believe, to, to get out of this uh, recessive uh, direction that we're in right now. Uh, but we also need to get the monetary policy together and, and, and we, need to, we need to balance a budget. So this is going to come down to us demanding Congress and our elected officials to actually represent us and our best interests and our children's future and say, you know what, we can't just print into this thing. Because if we keep printing like this and keep going down this road, I fear that we end up in something called stagflation, which is when we've got a stagnant economy, inflation accelerating. This is the worst case scenario, and it would definitely result in another lost decade if that's the case. And many people's retirements, uh, as well as their fortunes, uh, far underwater from, from where they see their levels here today. All right. Well, hey, thanks for that uh, that jolt of uh happiness and <laughs> optimism here david david we want to connect with you on the web we want to find out yeah you best place to find you these days sure um so fedbubble.com so i believe that the federal reserve is the cause of uh this recession i think that we need to name the cause of the recession uh you know uh, what, what's going on here. So the Federal Reserve bubble. So fedbubble.com, that gives people an opportunity to uh, to go on, get them to know us a little bit and some of our thesis and some understanding. But people are interested in second opinions, different ideas. I'd uh, love to be able to share some of those thoughts. And we're uh, building out uh, a, a lot more here in, in our video resource library as well. So uh, right. exciting things to do. All right. Hey, got a question for David myself, kl at carryletz.com. Shoot me an email and uh, the link to David's site, fedbubble.com, can be found in the show notes of this interview on financialsurvivalnetwork.com. While you're there, please sign up for your free newsletter. David, always a pleasure. Thanks for stopping by. Hey, appreciate you, Carrie. Pleasure's mine. Thank you. Thanks for listening to Carrie Lutz's Financial Survival Network, your solution to today's trying times. For the latest, go to financialsurvivalnetwork.com. Financial Survival Network, now more than ever.